migration as a in a labor you know, micro labor perspective. I'm looking at it as a more of a household sustaining household function perspective. You know, because when we say you know those migrants they go out, they make individual decisions. Actually, those are not individual decisions at all because those are actually household decisions. Where like our, our previous presenter speak about how they you know send back remittances to their households to their family back in the sending country. So it's actually a household decision they're making. So they go on to this journey of uh, migration, and then in some cases like I'm going to talk about in Taiwan, they're the migrant caregivers, which is a type of worker uh, in households, and the Im immigrant spouses. They also become linked in the um, receiving country's household. So they play a very important role in the receiving country's household function and reproduction of the society. So here are just some factors that uh, contribute to this load of in, uh, international migrations. When we talk about globalization, people first think of like uh, the flows of money, the flows of resources, and whatever. But there's also the flows of people. Um, just like back in the 19th century and early 20th century, there are like Chinese immigrants coming to the U.S. or to European countries. So nowadays, as the um, Asian countries become more developed, like Taiwan is one of the four Asian tigers. So then, um, some um, people from other Asian countries, the Southeast Asian countries, and even China, they come to Taiwan to work or marry to Taiwan. So there are some reasons why they migrate. And one of the reasons is that the national governments open up the border for uh, migrant workers to come in, especially working in the 3D sectors, which are very dangerous and uh, difficult kind of jobs, like constructions, like assembly lines, or small-scale manufacturing, even urban services nowadays. So, uh, on. So in Taiwan, there are at least two very big problems that triggers you know, the government to make this decision to open up these borders. One is this demographic transition that takes take place, which we are in the fifth, or some people say it's the final stage of demographic transition. Um, so the total fertility rate here, it went down from the post-war or to high of like 7.0, all the way to below replacement level of like 1.12 in 2005. So the replacement level, if you don't already know, it's 2.1 for developed countries. So um, 1.18, that's below that replacement rate, which means the population is actually declining slowly. And uh, so that suggests two things. One is that, um, the population is shrinking, and secondly, the labor force is also not enough to support the many functions of the society. Because um, as um, country industrialized and you used up all your rural labors, you know, rural surplus labors, so now you don't have any more surplus labor to fill your gaps in your urban uh, needs. So there's a um, yeah, demographic problem. And another one is also relating demographic is the Asian society where now there's about like 10% of the population in Taiwan or more than 65 or 65 or above so yeah so there is a social security problem here because the government cannot pay the dividends of those um, retired workers yeah. so these are just some that, that one is the prediction of the population pyramid in around that, that 2050. So this pre-aged. Okay, so go on. Now we're looking at the first group of people that I'm looking at here. They're the foreign workers in Taiwan. This data I got from um, the Bureau of Employment and Vocational Training in Taiwan. So after the government decided to open up in the late 1980s, then First, there are male workers coming in from abroad to work in the construction sectors and uh, manufacturing sectors. And then later on, in the early 1990s, um, they also allowed personal caregivers to come in. And those two categories that I have, the domestics and the caregivers, 
they're pretty much the same thing, just that the domestics, they got more stringent uh, regulations on them. So nowadays, households tend to get caregivers instead of domestics. So caregivers means that they take care of the chronically ill or the elderly. So they have to have some kind of uh, medical records to show that you know, they need this kind of service at, at home. So basically, there are about 400,000, sorry, yeah, yeah 400,000 foreign workers in Taiwan right now. And the uh, population of Taiwan is like two, uh, 22 million. So that's roughly like, I don't know, 1% or so. A little bit over 1%. And then one third of this foreign workers, they come from Southeast Asia. And the other two third is from, oh sorry, that, that is the, the other. I mean, 30% are the caregivers and, and uh, domestics. They are mostly all from Southeast Asia. Yeah, I don't think Taiwan allows workers from China yet. So that was mostly. Okay, so the reasons for the households now to, to hire foreign caregivers are kind of right here because they are relatively cheap. Uh, entry level college graduate get like $1,000 a month in Taiwan. Yeah, so, um, you know, a 24 hour on the clock live in Maine or in Maine only costs like seven, $650 a month. So that's a really inexpensive way. Instead of the female householders stay home and take care of you know, the elderly, it's much more economic, economical to do that and then they can get a second salary in the household. And also, it fulfills the, the value of you know, Chinese video period. So, it's, it's a good thing to the, the householding functions and the society in general. However, um, these migrant caregivers, especially, and the workers in general, they're not um, well, too well received by the, Chinese, the, the Taiwanese society. So, for, especially for the migrant caregivers, they don't have any kind of like labor protections. The, the workers in the construction sectors, they have minimum wage protection, they have guarantee days, days off. But for uh, caregivers who have the, like an individual contract with their, um, their employer, they have to stick, live in, in their employer's household. That's a, that's a regulation by the government. And so, and they don't have a minimum wage protection. And, there's no guaranteed days off. So it's like, like I think like 40% of those caregivers only get one or two days off in a month. Yeah. If they get any days off at all. Um, so that's, that's that. And then because of their living status, they're really highly dependent on their employers. And also the employers have to pay for their health insurance. The, in, into the Taiwanese uh, national health insurance system. It's not like they automatically get that kind of thing. So with, with that kind of high dependency on the employer, sometimes they're subject to 24-hour uh, surveillance by their employer, or they don't have their private space, or um, they, they can even abuse them or like, conf confiscate their uh, escort or other documents, control them. So then the government have stringent regula regulations for these caregivers. I already kind of touched upon them. And uh, for, for example, they cannot marry to a Taiwanese local um, anytime they're they are working in Taiwan. And they cannot get pregnant with whoever. So, and if they break any of their contract terms, they are gonna be sent back right away. And they, they cannot immigrate to Taiwan. They are just workers, whoever workers. There's no process for them to become immigrants unless you know, they, they, I don't know, somehow go home and do another kind of process. As a worker here, there in Taiwan, there's no way for them to ever immigrate to Taiwan. So there's no future prospect for them in the receiving country, at least in Taiwan. Then we're gonna turn to another group, the foreign spouses. Um, so they, this, they, they come in a little bit later, yeah, in the Taiwanese society, and um, they grow to about the same size now. There are like 400,000 of them in Taiwan. 
and the one third of them are from Southeast Asia, another two thirds.